Hello and welcome back to another episode of 5 Minute Materials, the show where we do the thing and we... Today we're going to be looking at material parameter collections. Now this is something that I should have covered a long time ago, but I haven't, so here we are. Now, what is a material parameter collection? Well, after some discussion with the chat and looking on the document, documentation doesn't know anything, but uh, essentially what I figure it is, is a collection of parameters that materials have a reference to, and they're just reading values from this little collection of parameters. Now, what does that mean in, you know, actuality? Well, we can right click, we can go to materials, and we can go to material parameter collection. Let's call this tutorial collection. That's it. You can see we're greeted with a big empty screen. We're just gonna, you know, put a scalar parameter in here called time. Maybe time is a zero to one value or something. And then vector parameters, maybe this is like our, our sun color or something. Cool. And we're just gonna hit save. So let's just grab a few crates so we can actually make some materials and actually test out what the heck is going on here. So let's grab a new material. New material. This one's just called material eight. We're gonna chuck it on that crate. And in here, we are just going to give it some default values. Maybe it's like, maybe it's a purple crate. And in this material, we are going to look up collection parameter. Now you can see it says unspecified. So down here, we're gonna click on collection. We're gonna look for the tutorial collection, bam. And the parameter that we're gonna choose is, let's choose time. So now we have this parameter in our material. If I remember correctly, it was a zero to one value. So let's just put this into a cosine. So in this material, we are just using our time parameter to kind of just do a curve and it's just gonna change the color of the material. Now in a different material, we can use that same time value to do something completely different. So maybe we want to make a crate explode slowly over time. I don't fucking know. Let's just get vertex normal world space multiplied by 40 multiplied by this time remapped value, blah, blah, blah. Chuck that into the world position offset and we hit save. And let's just apply that to this crate. And so now if we go to our parameter collection and we change this time value, it's going to be doing different things on these two different materials. So these parameter collections, usually they'll get used for global variables like your time of day, maybe like the player's location, whether it's like raining or not and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, different materials are going to react differently to, you know, those variables. So in a more practical sense. Uh, things I use this for is stuff like the, the wind amount. So as we ramp up our wind intensity, you can see that these trees all get windier. Um, you know, their leaves will start shaking more. They will start bending over in the wind. And this happens to all of the trees in the scene. But you can see the grass down here reacts differently to, you know, how the trees react. We can also use it for things like the the rain and also the the overall wetness of the scene so you can see here when it's raining i'm just gonna you know change this value so that everything becomes shiny and you know this uh this pitter patter happens and you know these are these are things that are global to the entire scene now if i wanted to exclude this from you know a mesh um, i'd have to specify that in the material i can do that currently by using vertex paint. So that's like one of the, the ways that you can kind of exclude on parts of a mesh, these kind of global variables taking effect. If you don't know what vertex paint is, I've got a video on it. You can, you can search it up. Another thing that these parameter collections are really useful for is for changing those kind of really hard to access variables. So if you've ever worked with like post-process materials and light functions and that kind of stuff, you'll know that, you know, you have to like create a material dynamic instance and, you know, set a reference to it and change the variables and blah, 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 blah. Uh, you can reference these material parameter collections inside those types of materials. So for example, I've got like this sky box and 
you know, when I change the cloud density, it's just referencing that in the in the skybox material. Conversely, it also changes the the cloud texture coverage in the light function, which is on my directional light. So you can see as the cloud density goes to 100%, then the directional light is completely obscured. Uh, if we put that back down to like, you know, 0.25, then you can see we've got these clouds kind of rolling overhead. Very, very cool, very spicy. We also use this in our post-process. So if we go to our fogginess, fog opacity. Uh, so if we put fog opacity to one and we put the fog distance up, then you can see that, you know, we're altering some values in the post-process just by using this, you know, this material parameter collection. Now this could also be used in, you know, materials in the in the world. So maybe we have some kind of, I don't know, monster that is only visible when when the fog value is really high or whatever. So you can basically access these values anywhere in any material and do whatever you want with them. So with this little setup here, we've got the time of day, basically when it is nighttime, it's going to be doing a thing. Uh, and then also when it is foggy, it's also going to be doing the same thing, uh, which is just going to be glowing really brightly. So you might use this for like uh, lamps or torches or something around your scene, uh, and you don't want to have to like switch them on with a blueprint every time, you know, every update or whatever. So in this example, let's put our fog up to, to one, uh, and you can see that this is now glowing really brightly. If we get our time of day and just switch it to be, you know, nighttime or something, um, then it will be glowing really brightly. If you wanted this to just be like an on-off effect, then you could just add some contrast, you know, do some math. So we could do some math like um, contrast, just cheap contrast with a value of 100 or something. Uh, we could even do that post max, which is just choosing the higher value. And so now if we have a look, then there will just be a point, which is 0.5, that it will just turn on. So yeah, again, this might be really useful for like street lights or something, and it can just kind of eliminate the need to manually update things. So if we want to actually change or update values in our material parameter collection, all we need to do is go set scalar parameter value, and it'll say collection here. That's how you know you've got the right one. And you just click that, get whatever collection you want to update get whichever value you want to update. So let's say it starts raining um, and I gradually want to, you know, change my rain parameter from zero to one. Just do some math and some, you know, a timeline or something. Alternatively, if you want to use a vector parameter, it's just set vector parameter value. And again, make sure it's got collection there. And then this is your linear color input. Same thing as, as this one. Now you can also get uh, these parameters. So get scalar parameter value. Uh, you can get this from the collection and do whatever you want with it. Uh, this can be really handy if you can't be bothered sending these variables explicitly, like from your time, time of day manager to whatever. You can just kind of grab it from here. Now, I don't know if this is best practice or not. I don't know what the cost associated with getting these values is, but I'm guessing that there is a copy of it on the CPU and the GPU at any given time. I don't know. Just it's there if you need it. <laughs> so in my case, you know, I've got this in the construction script um, to, to update, you know, some some stuff. If we just go into this blueprint, you can see uh, on construction, I'm just calling this event, which is the the time update event and essentially what it's doing is just you know getting the the time of day and then putting that every time we update into this parameter collection same thing goes for the rotation like angle of the sun we put in the sun's position vector uh, as well and then we also update the the atmosphere color which is like my kind of fog system um, and also the fog color so again, you probably see if we made it foggier. So if we chuck the fog opacity up to like, I don't know, 0.8 or something and put the distance up a little bit. As we start to change the time of day, it actually changes the color of the fog. So th there's a lot of ways you can kind of get these variables to all like interact with one another. And it can really just help add a lot of consistency to your scene as well. Now, 
there are a few things that I think this is kind of, it's not like inappropriate to use for some cases, but I do see some people using material parameter collections for like, you know, like color palettes that are all, you know, like they have like a grass color in the material parameter collection, which like there's nothing wrong with that if you are updating that same color at runtime. I don't know why you'd need to change it to a specific color, you know, for, for everything. Um, but for something like where you've got like a specific grass color that you just want to put on materials and stuff, I'd probably use a material function that has that in it because it'll be more performant because, you know, a, a constant value can just get kind of optimized into the, uh, into the shader at compilation time. Whereas a parameter that is expected to change has, you know, some kind of small cost overhead. What I would recommend doing, however, is having a, a value for like your seasons, for example. So let's say you've got, you know, winter, spring, I don't know what the order of seasons is, but let's just say it goes from zero to one and like repeats. So what you could do in your shader is, you know, let's say you want your grass to change to some specific colors in specific seasons but then you can also use that value for different things like you could make the opacity of your leaves go to zero in winter so rather than having a million different color values in your parameter collection that you have to kind of keep track of and stuff just have one value called season and then decide what to do with that value inside the shaders so that is the material parameter collection. I hope that you learned something new today. I hope you find this very useful as well. I know I found it extremely useful for, you know, kind of creating consistency and coherency in, you know, the, the world, the world of Prismatica. Wow. If you haven't already, make sure you like this video and subscribe and all that good stuff. If you do want help or have any questions with any of these tutorials, join our Discord below. And uh, if you want to see me do these kind of things live on Twitch, you can follow at a uh, twitch.tv slash prismaticadev. If you do want to support monetarily, you can do so for as little as $1 per month with the Patreon that is linked below. And I guess with that, we say goodbye. Goodbye. I want to die.